One of our most important challenges is to grow food in a way that uses less energy, uses less toxics, produces a higher yield for more people. This is a huge challenge. In some ways, it is the challenge for the green movement in the 21st century. The idea of a more traditional agriculture with local food being produced locally, seasonally appropriate, and being eaten by people who actually know their own farmers, that's part of the dream of a green economy. I'm Bill Dewey, I'm a shellfish farmer, and I manage public affairs for Taylor Shellfish Farms. The main oyster that we raise is the Pacific oyster, and that, that was imported from Japan uh, commercially in about 1921 is when we started bringing seed in from Japan. It grows well here, but it doesn't reproduce well. It's used to a little bit warmer water. These crops here are all artificially produced. We, we produce the seed in our hatchery, bring it out here and seed it out on the farm. Seed is, is baby oysters. So it'll be a, an old piece of oyster shell with baby oysters set all over it. So we use all our old oyster shell for seeding oysters on. So aquaculture is, is pretty simple. It's farming the sea. Sometimes I use the term mariculture, speak about just farming the marine waters, which is really what we do with our shellfish farms. So I work full time for Taylor Shellfish Company and I manage public affairs for Taylor's. So it's a, a lot that's encompassed with managing public affairs. I interact a lot on public policy mostly. During January through April, I work with the legislature on, on bills to deal with environmental health, water quality, stormwater, on-site sewage, things like that, that might affect our growing areas. The link between shellfish and water quality is pretty simple. All of the shellfish crops that we grow are filter feeders. So if there's any pollutant in the water, they're gonna filter it in and become unsafe to eat. So we can't sell them. We need uh, the environment here. Uh, we have to take care of it. Name is James Hall, farm manager, Taylor Shellfish Farm. We, we believe that all of the waters are connected. And um, if you pour, you know, antifreeze or oil down a drain up on your driveway, it's eventually gonna get to us, <laughs> you know. I'll get a call from um, uh, Greg Combs. He's a Department of Health in Olympia, Washington. If there's a big storm and there's a lot of rainfall and it's hitting the creeks and the rivers or hitting the bay, uh, he'll have me go into the bay and take marine samples and he'll compare those marine water samples with the fresh water samples that the other teams or the stream teams are taking in the fresh water and uh, he'll determine whether or not we can keep the bay open or not. If we can't keep the bays clean enough, then we won't have a future here. So, this bay here has been approved for growing shellfish for over 100 years, and the water quality is gradually degrading to where it looks like we're going to be looking at closures here with a half an inch of rain being shut down for five days at a time. So, it's going the wrong way out here right now. So, you know, I, I definitely saw a link. You know, there's jobs like mine within the shellfish industry that uh, I would definitely consider green jobs. For the work I do for tailors, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm working on public policy that's improving the environment, not just for our shellfish farm, but for everybody. If we do work that improves water quality for our shellfish, it improves water quality for people who are swimming or fishing or utilizing the waters as well. When I was uh, growing up, I spent my summers on Cape Cod and got fascinated by marine life. I used to work in the seafood restaurants. I used to cook it, but I'd spend all my time on the beach looking at it. So I wanted to be a marine biologist. And UW was one of the few schools in the country that had an undergraduate marine biology degree. So I transferred out here. And just kind of the way things go, you know, I was snooping around before classes started and the School of Fisheries was next door. And I started looking at the program there and I said, well, this looks way more interesting than oceanography and marine biology. It's more technical, more hands-on. Instead of looking through microscopes and writing grants, this was more doing it. And then I've worked in it ever since I got out of college, and, and I, I feel blessed. You know, I, I can honestly say in my 28 years of, of shellfish farming and doing this public policy work that I've looked forward to every day of work. A lot of the jobs that we have, you can't go to school to learn. And so the best way for us to teach people is to bring them in and mentor them. So James Hall is a great example of that. James started working for the company 27 years ago as a clam digger. 
but he's someone who over time took an interest in the farm and in the crops and in why some areas were successful and others weren't. Those are the type of people we look for. And so then we start, you know, encouraging James and, and to develop managerial skills, try to get him classes to improve his people skills and his math skills and his computer skills to where he'll have the ability to take on farm management and we'll have that sixth sense that we look for when people are looking at the beach and know why a crop survives and why it doesn't. Do you like shellfish? Do you like to eat it? Take it home? Fix it up? Know you grew it? Put a little butter and garlic in the pan? It's awesome. What's rewarding is I'm, I'm growing an animal that's good for the environment. So they're filter feeders, they're helping clean the water. And it's an incredibly nutritious food, so I'm, I'm producing a, a nutritious food that's good for the environment. And then when I'm working for tailors and I'm working on policy issues, I feel like I'm doing a, a service, a public service, in that I'm trying to strengthen environmental regulations that are protecting water quality for everybody, not just the shellfish farmers. That's rewarding for me. I love what I do. Agriculture is the single largest contributor to environmental pollution in the world. It can potentially contaminate the soil, the water, and the air in huge amounts, and it is largely unregulated. So in the 21st century, we're going to find that the entire agriculture and food industry is going to go green.